Hi. Today, I'd like to welcome you once again to Prophecy and Biblical Mysteries. I am the author of this video series, and my name is Roy Scott. I'm a retired pastor, Bible teacher, and have written several Christian blogs, including Do Not Let Your Lamp Go Dry, as well as A Study in Hebrews, and all of my blogs are available online at blogspot.com. I'd now like to take you on a journey through Scripture and discover the mystery of the Book of Life. When we're finished, please read Revelation 20, 11 to 15. In Christianity and Judaism, the Book of Life is the book in which God records the names of every person who is destined for eternal life and the new earth. It is referred to six times in the Book of Revelation, which is the last book of the New Testament, and it would appear that only those whose names are written in the Book of Life, written from the foundation of the world, and have not been blotted out, are saved at the Last Judgment. Note, I'll be discussing the Lamb's Book of Life also as we progress through the video. We read in Revelation 20.12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And then again, in Revelation 20:15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It's kind of scary to think about, but would appear that all that we do or say is written down and recorded in books. These will be opened at the White Throne Judgment and we will be judged according to our works. However, irrespective of what may be decided from this, only those found written in the Book of Life will go on to eternal life, whilst those not found therein will be cast into the lake of fire. Please note, this judgment is of the dead and I saw the dead and small and great sorry, and I saw the dead small and great stand before God. It's not of those who have already been resurrected prior to this judgment. Those who have already been resurrected and appeared before the judgment seat of Christ do not take part in this particular white throne judgment. Now you may ask, how is it possible for names to be written in the Book of Life from the foundation of the world? Well, the answer would appear to be because God is omniscient, among other attributes, and since for God, time as we know it does not exist. God who existed before time began and will continue to exist for eternity, has known since before the foundation of the world all who will be saved through faith and those who will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. These things, these have had their names written in the Book of Life before the creation of the world. And this, of course, in no way means that we do not have a choice in what we do or what our destiny will be. Some feel the fact that names can and will be blotted out means that everyone's name was originally written in the Book of Life, but because of a lack of faith and their spurning the wonderful gift of grace and love provided through God's Son, and his willingness to pay the price for their sins and to take upon him our punishment, as we find recorded in Isaiah 53 and 5, then their name will be blotted out. Isaiah 53 and 5 reads, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We should rejoice that our names are written in the Book of Life, even more than for the wonderful gifts and power which have been granted to us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Christ clearly stated this as we recorded in Luke 10:19 and 20. When speaking to the disciples who returned rejoicing that the devils were subject unto them through the name of Jesus, he said, Behold, I give unto you power 
to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather because your names are written in heaven. Very clear, I think. That's how important the Book of Life is, and that your name remains written within its pages. Are there then two books of life? The Bible also mentions the Lamb's Book of Life, and it would appear that not everyone has his or her name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. One's name is not written in at birth, nor does he or she have it written in by the sovereign choice of God. A person's name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life only because he or she chooses to ask God to place it there. Jesus Christ offers us eternal life, and if we receive him, if we invite him into our hearts, if we heed his call and ask him to come as Lord and Savior, he enters into our lives, Revelation 3, verse 20, and the recording angel writes our names into the Lamb's Book of Life. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If not, I want to urge you to invite Jesus Christ into your life right now and let him write it there. This is the book which will be opened at the judgment seat of Christ and from which will be read that which was done with the gifts which all true believers have been provided. You don't know about the gifts? Check it out with your pastor. Since Christ already died for their sins and for that reason they come spotless before him they are now judged and rewarded for that which they have done or not done with their gifts. Have a look at my previous post, The Judgment Seat of Christ. As I have said, the Judgment Seat of Christ is not a place and time when the Lord will mete out punishment for sins, those committed by the child of God. Rather, it is a place where rewards will be given or lost, depending on how one has used his or her life for the Lord. It's a very serious time and carries with it eternal ramifications. The words of Revelation 22 and 12 then carry very real significance because there we read, Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. Some people are troubled by the doctrine of rewards because this seems to suggest merit instead of grace. And because, it is pointed out, we should only serve the Lord out of love and for God's glory. Of course we should serve the Lord out of love and for God's glory. I'm not saying we shouldn't. And understanding the nature of rewards will help us do that. The fact, however, still remains that the Bible promises us rewards. Salvation is a gift that we receive from God through faith. Our part, then, is through the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts he provides us to continue to serve him. Indeed, he works in us both to will and to do as we appropriate his, gaze, his grace. Sorry. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. For the decision to serve and the diligence employed in doing so are our responsibility, our contribution to the work which lies ahead as God reaps the harvest of souls. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10 also reads, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me did not prove vain. But I labored even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God within me. Also, Colossians 1.29 And for this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. You could check out the parable of the talents for a further explanation of this concept. Or you can check out the following. Romans 14.10-12 1 Corinthians 3.11-15 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10, 1 John 2, 28, and Revelation 3, 
11 to 12. You'll also, by the way, find further references to the Book of Life in Exodus 32-33, Psalm 69-28, Daniel 12 and 1, Philippians 4 and 3, Hebrews 12 and 23, Revelation 13 and 8, Revelation 3 and 5, Revelation 20, 12, Revelation 21, 27, Revelation 17, 8, 22, 19, and Revelation 20, 15. I hope you'll have found this video of help in your Christian walk. As always, I'm open to questions and discussion. I would, however, strongly encourage you to dig deeply into Scripture and confirm what you have heard from me today. Don't just take my word. Go back to the scripture, look at it, read it, and confirm it. May the Holy Spirit lead you into all truth. In these videos, all scripture references are taken from the King James Version. And don't forget to leave your comments, questions, or suggestions you may have regarding other prophecies or mysteries in the scriptures. You may also want to subscribe to this channel. May God bless you. Amen.